So hi everybody, we're gonna learn 50 super useful adjectives that improve our lexical resource, uh, which means LR in IELTS. Well, today I am with the Osror IELTS instructor, that's the YouTube channel. Okay, now I have um, picked up very, very useful 50 uh, words, actually adjectives, that can help you to crank up your lexical resource and I'm gonna demonstrate them one after one. Okay, that's good, so let's get started. The first word that I was planning to teach you uh, is versatile. Well, the word is versatile. Actually, uh, we Uzbek people tend to read the, the this part like tile, not toe. But actually, that word sounds versatile. Busus versatile de bokalada. Buzlegan Uzbeklar, Ahrada Sha Yaki Urtada, the E A Sha I the Masana Harfana, Buz Odata I the Bokimus, Lakin Bujoid and Nayamas, Yani, versatile. So let me come to the definition of this word. And versatile means a person who is able to change easily from one activity to another or be able to use for many different purposes. Uh, which means in our language that's going to be translated like Moslashuchan, Krishkituchan, and uh, for some examples to get a complete picture about the word is here he is a very versatile young actor who is happy in horror horror films as he is in TV comedies. Or a laser jacket is a timeless and versatile garment that can be worn in all seasons. And I think you got a complete picture about that and uh, if you wish you can work with me simultaneously. Which means just get a paper and pencil, just sit down and uh, you're, watching the f you're watching the video and you can pose it and you can make a number of sentences till you feel confident about the word. Okay, now, so the word is versatile. You can just keep the pose and make some notes or make some sentence for this word and we can keep going. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the next word. Well, the next word is modest. Well, the word is ma the this. Well, th this dialect is American. But there are people who prefer British, British pronunciation, British dialect. And if we sound like British one, then that's gonna be a little bit different. That's gonna be like modest, not modest. But in American dialect, we have to pronounce the word like modest, modest. So its definition is not usually t talking about or making obvious your abilities, your own abilities, <clears throat> and achievements. Well, in our language, that's gonna be very like precise. It means kamtar. Well, we know people who are really modest. Uh, we know people who prefer not to show off their abilities among people. So we call them modest, modest people. So let's pay attention to its <clears throat> examples. So. He is very modest about his achievements. I want you to stay modest, whatever you might achieve. That sounds cool, right? That sounds cool. Okay, once more, I'm gonna repeat. <clears throat> Till you feel confident about the word, you can just keep the pose and take some notes uh, and just make some notes or make some sentence, whatever, just uh, pronounce the word or whatever you do. To feel confident, okay? Just do whatever you wish. So that's the second word that I consider super beneficial to your, uh, let's say, vocabulary. So let's keep going. The next word is what I love, what I love much is inventive. So inventive means that's not inventive or that's not invented, that's inventive. Uh, so we're not gonna stress on the end, like at the end part, the like ending parts of the word. So we have to stress the the letter V right here. Inventive, inventive. Inventive means uh, very good at thinking of new and original ideas. 
And in our language, that's going to be like asal ideyalar bilan chiqishga yaxshi or yaxshi fikrlay oladigan, yaxshi fikrlarni taqdim eta oladigan ma'nosini beradi. Okay, so uh, let's look at the examples. He is um, he is very inventive, always dreaming up new gadgets for the home. Or also he is quite young, he is so inventive that he comes up with different ideas. And I hope that's super uh, clear to you guys. Okay, I hope you have you have taken some notes and you have made a number of sentences by pausing the video. Okay, let's keep going on. <clears throat> The next word that I like a lot is selfless, selfless. So we are paying attention, like we are stressing the first letter, S selfless. So selfless means um, someone who is selfless only thinks of other people's advantage, which means that person is not selfish. That person is not selfish. That person is selfless. Selfless means the person who thinks about other people's um, advantage, not himself, not herself. So that's going to be in our language a little bit different, like uh, which means selfless. So now let's pay attention to the examples made right here. So I respect those who are selfless. That's my sentence. I really respect those who are selfless. I love such people. <clears throat> okay, or it's difficult to find a person who is selfless. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, life is getting more and more difficult as time elapses, so people are getting selfless and more and more selfless. Yeah, we have to admit the fact. Okay, and the last sentence made here is, uh, he also won great respect for his selfless service. See? Selfless service, which means that's not only used for people, but also some service or some like action. Okay, and I also guys want you to pay attention those words like selfless, self, selflessly and selflessness and selfish. Okay, uh, selfish, selflessness and selflessly, that's gonna like help you to get a more and clear, complete picture about that word i hope you you have made some notes okay so let's keep going on <clears throat> the next word is wise the next word see wise that's not wise that's not wise most people pronounce that word um in this way like that sounds wrong that is wise that's not wise that's not uh, wise that's wise so its definition is Having or showing the ability to make good judgments or based on a deep understanding and experience of life. So in our language, that's going to be dono, akali, or tugre. Okay, now uh, let's read the examples to understand, uh, to understand in detail or to, to get uh, more more clear picture. So I think you have you you made a wise choice, which means your choice was was really like right. I liked your choice, or that was the only choice you were supposed to make. This kind of things, okay? So the next sentence is I never used to save money, but now I am a little older and wiser. I can see the sense in it. See, that's a so like beautiful sentence made right here for you guys. So just, um, I advise you to read every single example. And uh, if you fail to understand uh, what the example is really about, just try to translate that and understand deeper. Okay, now it's time to move on. The next word that I love so much is trustworthy. Trustworthy. Well, we can uh, divide that word into two parts. The first is trust. And trust is kind of like belief, trust somebody. And worthy, worse means, uh, well, we've got something that, that that's like deserved to be done something. Like, uh, let's say uh, the film is worth watching. Or let's say the place is worth visiting. Which means 
That's well, uh, we were discussing the word trustworthy, and you know, I, I am speaking a little bit faster, and that's really good. You can take some advantage of it because uh, when you hear people speak faster in English, then your like ears get accustomed to to, to understanding that as soon as uh, you hear them, as soon as you get uh, get to their like voice okay so that's good so that's only your advantage well trustworthy that's uh, let's pay attention its definition so trustworthy means a person or a thing that can be or that's uh, able to be trusted and that's translation is going to be naturally okay and now look at its examples so he's a trustworthy man or my friends are trustworthy where we need trustworthy employees. And I really want you guys to look at the word trustworthiness. It's a noun version of trustworthy, and that's really worth looking at and learning. That's gonna that's gonna help you sound more professional. Okay, now it's time to move on. Let's move on to the next slide. So we've got right here, oh my god, that's the word I like so much. You know why, why I like this word so much is um, this word is uh, considered to help people, to help learners to sound more professional and um, to sound more outstanding because, uh, you know, as long as you pronounce that word correctly, then you sound professional or otherwise you cannot sound professional. Most people read this word uh, like gorgeous. Gorgeous, but actually we can see right here. That's not gorgeous, but that's actually courageous So courageous you have to stress the word R right here the letter R so courageous That's that that's a little bit different to what you think or might think okay now let's pay attention at definition courageous means having or showing uh, courage which means Jasur, Botur, Korkmas, or Jasorat Nakursa Tadigan. Okay, uh, let's let's read the examples. As he approached the skin, uh, the courageous cop realized that the girl had not seen him and decided to act fast. And uh, it was courageous of her to challenge the managing directors or if we pronounce American director's decision. So and um, once more, I have to repeat, guys, if you cannot understand what I'm talking about or if you cannot understand these examples, you can pause the video and just uh, uh, search the word that you don't know or look it up, look it up and just uh, feel till, till you feel confident you can uh, study. OK, that's good. So the word is courageous. Let's keep going on. The next word is um, as we pronounce this word in the way of British people that that's gonna be tolerant but if we try to sound like an American guy that's gonna be tolerant Ta, not to but tolerant so its definition is able to deal with something unpleasant or annoying or to continue existing despite bad or difficult conditions so in our language that's gonna be so precise and short that's Chidamli. That's Chidamli. Okay, now let's read, let's study the examples given here. I think men are less tolerant of stress than women. Or, compare it to other planets, we as more tolerant of drought. I hope you have got the complete picture about the word too. Okay, let's keep going on. The next word is, that's what I like so much, is so, reserve it. Reserve it has uh, a number of meanings in English. So, now I'm, I'm gonna use this word to describe people's character, people's personality. So, that's gonna be a little bit different uh, to all the meanings. So, uh, it has got different meanings, as I said mm, above. Okay, now let's read its definition. Its definition uh, tells us that Reserve it means, or it describes people who do not often talk about or show 
their feelings or thoughts. So that's um, in Uzbek language uh, gonna be like yopak or introvert. Introvert like I'm again ochilaver my digan, you're again och me digan, was fikrlar and bolish me digan. Yopak insan. Okay, let's study its examples now. So she is a quiet, reserved woman. Or the English have a reputation for being reserved. Or I used to be rather a reserved boy when I was a kid. But now I'm too talkative. <laughs> this sentence is describing just strike me. So I'm I used to be rather a reserved boy. Yeah, that's that's true. So when I was a kid. But now I'm too talkative. Yeah, I speak a lot today. Okay, let's keep going on. The next word is benevolent. So that's gonna be benevolent. See, we have to stress the letter N. Benevolent. Benevolent, benevolent means kind and helpful. In our language, that's gonna be Mikhrobon or Ramchor. Okay, he was a uh, benevolent old man. He wouldn't hurt a fly. See? My mother is such a benevolent woman that she always worries about the poor and the disabled. Where being benevolent does not does not require you to be rich. That's actually true. Okay, guys, let's continue learning highly beneficial words. The next one is benign, and benign is uh, quite close to the meaning of benevolent. So I sometimes hear the native speakers use this word together. So uh, that woman is uh, benevolent and benign, kind of, they come together sometimes. Okay, its definition is pleasant and kind, which which is quite close to the word benevolent. Now, its translation is bezarar, khshmomala, and mehrabar. And its examples right here, we, we have been given. So, my grandmother is a benign old lady, where my sister is so benign. Okay, guys, let's keep going on. Wow, this word is what I love so, so much, guys. See, guys, I'm repeating the same phrase time and time again that towards words. I love this word. That's my favorite one. I, I really love this word. I appreciate that word. Wow, that's so meaningful, blah, 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 things. Because I've, I've made a list of those words that I love too much. That's why... Uh, you can hear me repeat this sentence time and time again, or even it to each word right here. Okay, just do not pay attention to my emotions. I'm kind of being some emotional. Okay, but anyway, I really want you to learn these words, these adjectives to, to increase your lexical resource. Okay, so it's um, definition. So the word itself is conscientious. Conscientious. Conscientious means putting a lot of effort into your work, which means that's that's quite close to the word of hard working, or mm, let's say uh, that that describes a person who really works hard, or uh, the person who really tries to come up with different ideas uh, to increase the efficacy of the job of the work, or let's say yeah such a good person, okay? And its translation is close to the word Trishok, that actually I would say a lot of words for this adjective. So I found uh, on Google search engine and it gave me this word. So the word is present right here. But actually, I guess you got the word in a little bit deeper meaning right here after my sentence. Okay, now let's read the examples. I'm as a conscientious student. I'm a conscientious student means I study uh, really hard. Uh, I pay attention to my study, uh, my like let's say essays or my speaking uh, seriously. That's not just that's really serious. Okay, we are generally very conscientious about our work. Aziza. Uh, was still struggling to be a conscientious and dedicated mother. Okay, guys, I hope you have understood that word too. So let's continue. The next word is really popular among uh, English teachers and students. 
<clears throat> well, the word is really, really popular um, among uh, learners because they often use this word to describe themselves. And the word is wrongly pronounced very often. That's why I'm going to first pay attention to its uh, way of pronunciation. Uh, so it, that's not studious, that's actually studious. Studious. That's actually studious. See, guys? That's not studious. Yeah. Uh, the, its origin is study. I know. There is a verb like study. And this adjective comes from that word, verb. I know. But even though that word sounds study, uh, right here, that that uh, you sounds ah, but in its adjective uh, pronunciation way, that's gonna be a little bit different. So you have to you have to pronounce this word studious, like studious. Okay, its definition is describes someone who enjoys studying and spends a lot of time studying. <clears throat> um, in our language, Now let's study the examples given here. She was a serious child, happiest reading than reading. So she's uh, she's very quiet, serious girl. Okay, let's continue. The next word is well, I missed one. So the next word is masculine, masculine, and that is really great word. Um, so let's read its definition. Having characteristics that are traditionally thought to be typical of or suitable for men. Uh, in our language, that's erkekke khas or erkekche or erkekler shunaka tipte bolade manosige ege. Okay, and let's study its examples to get the complete picture. So, a masculine, a masculine appearance or a masculine voice. Erkekçe korunish or erkekçe ovos. She looks a bit masculine in that suit. See, you can you can use this word even for female gender, but to mean that, oh come on, stop being that. Otherwise, you sound like a masculine man, or you you sound uh, masculine. Okay, or he wanted a more masculine hairstyle. Okay. I hope that word is uh, what you can use in your speech. So let's keep going on. The next word is confident. That's not confident, that's confident. And confident means having confidence, which means the quality of uh, being certain of your abilities or of having, the, having trust in people, uh, plans, or the future. And that's gonna be translated in our language like Uzuge Shangya. And now let's uh, learn the examples. Be a bit more confident in yourself. See, that word confident comes with in. So, be a bit more confident in yourself. Uh, they, don't, or they don't sound confident about the future of the industry. Industry. So, where I'm confident of his skills as a manager. Or are you confident that enough people will attend the event? So confident, confident, which means uh, believing in your abilities, or you certain of your abilities, or you certain of uh, you, you you trust you certain of in plans or the future event. Okay, let's keep going on. The next word is oh my god, this word is also uh, mispronounced very often. Well, I hear people, I hear learners pronounce that word like determinate, determinate. But actually, the word does not sound like that. The word sounds determinate, determinate, determine. Well, uh, actually, we've got the determined, and uh, its definition is wanting to do something very much and not allowing anyone or any difficulties to stop you. And in our language, that's gonna be kati krishkan, jiddi on the shuchan or trishkak. See, kati krishkan, wanting to do something very much and not allowing anyone or any difficulties to stop you. Okay, now let's study its examples. 
I'm determined to get this piece of work finished today. And uh, she is sure to get the job she wants. She is a very determined person. See how like cool, awesome that word is. Come on, guys. Open your eyes. Learn this word. That's going to be like helpful. Okay, let's continue. The next word is, well, this word is also mispronounced very often. And people pronounce this like optimistic, like we do in our own language, in our native language, we say, ah, oh, I, I'm thinking optimistic again, huh? but actually in, in, our, in, in the English language, that's going to be, ah, optimistic, a little bit, ah, okay, optimistic, optimistic, and you have to stress the word right here, the letter M, okay, the sound M, mm, mystic, mystic, and its definition is hopeful, believing that good things will happen in the future. And its translation is going to be like Or And uh, she is optimistic, like see, optimistic about her chance of winning a gold medal. And uh, it's a bit optimistic, optimistic, see, to, to expect the politician to tell you the uh, unvarnished truths. Yeah, that's a very great example to understand, to understand more about that word. Okay, let's continue, guys. The next word is generous. Generous. And I'm sure you know this word as it's uh, one, of, one of the essential words that you should have learned so far. Okay, so its definition is willing to give money, help, um, or kindness, and etc. Especially more than uh, is usual or expected. Well, in our language, that's going to be Sahi, Sahawatli, Oli, Hamat. Okay, uh, now let's learn its examples, its sentence. A very generous man. Or, it was most generous of you to lend me the money. Or, she's been very generous with her, with her time. Well, um, you, can, you can understand reading these examples. Uh, adapt the word more and more. Okay, that's why just do not get the word itself all the time. Learn new new words with its samples or with its grammatical structures or at least some collocations. And uh, that's always wise to to pay attention its its prepositions, how to use them, when to use them, and when not to use them. So you, you can you can understand about the word better. Okay, now let's continue. The next word is well, ambitious. Ambitious. See, we have to stress the sound B right here. Ambitious. Ambitious means having a strong wish to be successful, powerful, and rich. And uh, that's gonna be like intelujan or shkrat paras. Well, we can understand about the word more by reading its example. So, we are all ambitious. It seems to run in the family. An ambitious young lawyer, where he's very ambitious for his children. He wants them to be successful, which means he's very ambitious for his children. It means he wants them to be very successful or to be successful. So, Robert is a self-centered, ambitious, and bigoted man. So, you can understand these words like in, by, by reading examples. Okay, let's keep going on. The next word is talkative. Talkative. That's not talkative, but that's talkative. You have to um, stress the first letter. T talkative. Talkative means talking a lot. A person who is talking a lot or a person who tends to talk a lot. In our language, that's going to be Sergap, Isma, or Mahmadona. And its examples are right here, so we can read them and learn the words uh, better. So, she is a lively, talkative person. Or, I wish you would stop being talkative. Or, although he is rather talkative, everybody likes him. And uh, you can also see uh, the word Taddy. Taddy means... Actually, Teddy is used in informal English uh, 
Uh, but anyway, that's used very often, so um, it's wise to, to learn a word with its synonyms, okay? Well, let's move on to the next word. Okay. So, the next word is childish. Well, we, we know the word child. Child means a kid, a child means a young person, a very young person. And now let's learn the word childish. Childish means uh, if, a, if an adult is childish, they behave badly in a way that would be expected of a child. Uh, in our language, that's going to be bolalarche, bolalarge khas. Agar kapkatta odam bolalarga xos bolalarcha birorta bir ish qilsa, biz uni behave badly, ya'ni o'zini yomon tutdi deb hisoblaymiz va ularga nisbatan, ularning qaroriga nisbatan childish degan so'zni ishlatamiz. Okay, let's study the examples given here. So, he wasn't enjoying the occasion so he thought he uh, would spoil it for everyone else. It was very childish of him. Oze osha occasion nan enjoy qmayot kan ligit fayri. U qoganlaram enjoy qmasliga kerak. Shunchun ham ma spoil qilishim kerak deb oyladi. Va u tomondan qilingan childish ish edi. Ya'ni bolalarchalik qulollarga xos bo'lgan ish bo'lgan. She is very childish. I can't talk to her anymore. See, you can you can understand by reading examples. Okay guys, let's keep going on. The next word is Next word. Well, the next word is competitive. Competitive. Competitive means wanting very much to win or to be more successful than other people. See, you all the time compare yourself to other people. Like you, let's say, you compare yourself to your peers or group mates or classmates or to your, to your relatives your age, and uh, you try to be more successful than they are or you want to win, um, or you want to challenge them. Yeah, if you have such uh, personality, uh, such a personality, then you can be regarded as competitive person. And its translation is Rakhobat Lashadikyan, Rakhobat Dosh, Rakhobat Sivar, in our language. Okay, so let's um, read these examples. You're very competitive. Uh, it's meant to be a friendly match. See, you try to, to win, you try to win very much, and it looks really like stupid, or it looks kind of self, selfish, so people say, oh, come on, it's meant to be a friendly match, so you shouldn't, um, you shouldn't behave like competitive. Or I could never play team sports, I lack the competitive spirit, which means a strong wish to, be, to, to beat authors. So I lack the competitive spirit. Okay, guys, let's keep going on. The next word is, well, this word includes the word consider. Consider means uh, to think or to regard or let's say to reckon. These kind of words can be equal uh, to the meaning of consider. But we've got the word considerate. See, most people read this, this word like considerate. Because uh, at the end of this word, we can see eight. Eight. So people pronounce this word consider eight. Consider eight. But actually, that's not consider eight, but that's considerate. Considerate. And considerate means kind and helpful. That's really close to the word benign and benevolent. So we've got the announced words. So it's considerate. And in our language, that's going to be mikhrabon or yordam sevar. So, uh, let's read the, the examples to understand more. It wasn't very considerate of you to drink all the milk. My father is really generous and considerate because he always worries how much money I have in my pocket before I go to school. See, our fathers are really, really like, or like the person that's being des described in this sentence. So, generous and considerate. Okay, guys, let's keep going on. The next word, well, oh, the, the word what I like so much. So, we've got the word idea, and, and it's, uh, well, in this word, idea. An idea is a notion that I, I'm sure 
I'm certain that you know this word uh, perfectly. And I don't have to pay attention to the word itho, I mean the origin of the word. And now let's let's learn the word idealistic. Idealistic means believing that very good things can be achieved. Often then this does not seem likely to others. Uh, optimistic So idealistic. Um, idealistic people believe that very good things can be achieved or uh, even difficult situations, difficult problems can be solved or e at least figured out and they believe that that's gonna help them or that were often when this does not seem likely to others they believe they can they can achieve or they can solve the problem. So and now let's read the uh, examples. When I was young and idealistic, I believe that it was possible to change the world. Yeah, you know, I can I can also be categorized uh, in, 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 in this type because it, sometimes I still believe that uh, the, it's possible to change the world, at least in terms of educational system or uh, our country's education system should be changed and it can be changed, kind of, I believe. So uh, I feel idealistic. I, I really feel idealistic. Uh, I hope you can understand what I'm talking about. So it's quite idealistic of you to imagine stopping the corruption. <laughs> that's really, see, that, that, that's, that seems like uh, super uh, impossible to most people to stop corruption. But if you believe that can be stopped, where they can be sorted out, then you can be regarded as uh, idealistic or as an idealistic person. Okay, just to study these words uh, better, okay, because that's gonna be so, so helpful and that this word helps you to sound more professional, okay? So let's continue. Let's continue. The next word is outgoing. Outgoing. You know, guys, why? pick this word uh, because you know most people use sociable uh, most people use easygoing or most people use like a person who can get on well with other people or this kind of words but but actually they've got a very great word like outgoing outgoing I prefer outgoing to or easygoing uh, I prefer outgoing to sociable I don't know why, because uh, outgoing is something that I hear the native speakers use more than all the words uh, or synonyms of this of this meaning. Okay, outgoing means of a person. Actually, of a person, it's a, an approving word. It means friendly and energetic, and uh, finding it easy and enjoyable to be with others. It means uh, uh, the person likes being with people. And in our language, that's going to be Krishim Lee, Odamlar Balantis, Tel Topship, Ketadigan, Insan. And its examples are right here. And sales reps need to be outgoing because they are constantly meeting, meeting uh, customers where she has an outgoing personality, which means she can easily get on well with people. <clears throat> okay, guys, let's keep going on. Ah, by the way, um, you know, I've been teaching different different uh, types of uh, words that describe people's personality or people's reaction to to, to certain uh, situations. So that would be wise uh, and even wiser of you to to visualize the situation and try to use these words in your practice or when you when you try having some conversation like in English conversation with your friends or peers or teachers try to use these words okay you're gonna you're gonna sound more professional just trust me uh, I'm I'm quite certain okay just do that let's continue the word that I like so much is reckless reckless and reckless means mm, doing something dangerous and not worrying about the risks and the possible results. 
which means the person uh, does not worry about the, uh, let's say, ramifications, like in sequence, where they could be worse, it could be positive, but the person does not. And its translation is ehtiyatsiz or uylamay bajarilgan ish harakat or uylamay bajarilgan. Okay? So uh, now let's read some examples to understand uh, about the word. Well, he was found guilty of reckless driving. See, he drove his car very fast. And um, let's say some accident, some accident could have happened, but fortunately nothing happened. But, but anyway, he was found guilty of uh, reckless driving. Or if I were you, I would stop doing all the reckless things that you're doing these days. Or I wish he would think about the adverse ramifications of his reckless doings. See, so many great sentences right here given for this word for you to understand the word in detail. Okay, let's guys keep going on. The next word, the next word that I love very much is emotional. Emotional. See, guys, I've picked this word up uh, as this word is also mispronounced very often. People pronounce this word emotional. It's actually not emotional, it's emotional. Well, and uh, you know, I also hear people say, like, not English, but English. I've been learning English for, let's say, for two months. I, I hear, I hear learners uh, saying this this word or mispronounce this word English or emotional. No, these words should be pronounced like emotional and English. And now let's pay attention to its definition: having or expressing strong feelings. Having and expressing strong feelings, which means trying to or emotional. Now let's read its examples. He is a very Emotional man, or I felt quite emotional during the wedding ceremony, or he became very emotional uh, when I told him I was pregnant. Well, uh, Letty is saying that, okay? Uh, well, let's continue. Let's continue. Okay, and we've got another word right here. That is, oh my god, I love this word too much. Uh, you know, this word uh, actually hails from the word decision or decide. Let's say we've got a, we've got a verb decide. And uh, its, adjective, uh, its adjective version is uh, dis, de, uh, decisive. Well, decisive. Decisive means uh, able to make decisions quickly and confidently and showing this quality. Well, in our language, that's going to be tiz o'zigi shongan qarorlar qabul qiluvchan yoki shu qislatni ko'rsatuvchan decisive. Well, you need to be more decisive or a decisive reply. Okay, guys, let's continue. Okay, guys, this word uh, is decisive okay that, that that's uh, that comes from the word uh, decide okay now let's continue the next word is <clears throat> vain well uh, I'm quite sure guys you have heard this word before because there is a phrase like in vain and even we've got a saying like money spent on the brain is never spent in vain uh, in our language, that's gonna be like Mia uchun sarflangyan pul hichkachon bekorga sarflangyan pul emas Yani bekorga sarflapsan, bekorga qilipsan deganda in vain degan fraza nishlatar edik, in vain So, but right here there is no in So, uh, the vein itself comes and we have to learn its definition Too interested in your open appearance or achievements, see? That's, that's really close to the word self, selfish. And its translation is Uzun kurnishiga va yutkularga gina qiziqadigan inson. Yani qoganlarni qiziqishi, qoganlarni 
yutuqları, korunışı və başqa başqası gə ignor qaladı. Gən adam, okey. He was very vain about his hair and his clothes. Where I wish you would stop being that vain about your own achievements. See? That's a negative meaning word, okay? So, let's keep going on. The next word is, wow, that word is so, so uh, good and a common word that, that's used very much. And the word, man, the word, well, let's first pay attention to its pronunciation. Well, most people uh, pronounce this word arrogant or arrogant or something like that. But actually, as we can see right here, we've got a stress on a arrogant. See, guys? Arrogant. Arrogant. Arrogant means uh, definition. Let's, let's read its definition. Unpleasantly proud and be behaving as if you are more important than or no more than other people. Uh, which means kibirlangan, dumogdor, kekkaygan. I found him arrogant and rude, where I watched the interview and thought he seemed quite arrogant. Uh, if I say I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a leading economic expert, uh, won't that sound rather arrogant? See guys, kibirlangan, they still mind them and Well, study this word. Um, in in detail, if you want to sound more professional or if you want to sound, uh, let's say, more more clear and obvious and let's say lucid or let's say explicit about your uh, point. Okay, let's continue. The next word is uh, grumpy, and grumpy means easily annoyed and complaining. Uh, which means in our language that's gonna be no lead again. Grumpy, grumpy. See guys, we've got so many grumpy people. Uh, we we can we can get um, like actually we we every day get some news about grumpy people. Uh, during the quarantine, the poor are helped by the rich, but anyway, the poor are being uh, grumpy. Uh, so, I, I don't like grumpy people, and you don't like grumpy people either, I guess. So, let's study its examples. I hadn't had enough sleep and was feeling a bit grumpy. See? Uh, where I don't like grumpy clients. See? Nobody likes grumpy, grumpy clients, actually. Or a grumpy old man. Yeah, we can see such. Such an old man, like being grumpy, like complaining about everything, or being, let's say, a person who splits hairs, or like or something like that. Okay, just grumpy, no lead again. Let's move the next word, and the word is ill-mannered. Ill-mannered means uh, rude and unpleasant. Uh, in our language, that's gonna be kopal vayokumsis. Uh, but I would say that's uh, close to tarbiyasis. Okay, and now let's read its examples. And this root, an ill-mannered individual who assumes he has the force of the law behind him. Wow, uh, you can use this word quite often in our country, guys. And that was ill-mannered of you, abroad. Uh, but actually, abroad, that's not for you. Okay, just that was an example. <laughs> Uh, you are a stubborn and ill-mannered little lad. Lad means uh, a man in the informal English, okay? Lad, lad. Lad means man. Like, uh, we also use that in our language, but in a, in a bit, like, a little bit different. So, you are a stubborn and ill-mannered little lad. And I, I would advise guys to study those words that I have given below these examples, like ill-informed, ill-looking, and ill-natured, and then you can you can understand about that suffix of ill, okay? And not actual suffix, prefix of uh, an ill. Okay, guys, let's continue. The next word is tiresome. Tiresome. I'm sure you know, guys, the word tiring, the word tired, but you, I, I believe you've never heard the word tiresome, tiresome. And actually, we've got a 
suffix that that is some and in our language that suffix can be translated like tiresome like okay and uh, but now let's let's try and um, it's well uh, let's let's uh, try the, to give a definition to the word itself tiresome well definition is telling us that tiresome means a person who is boring or annoying uh, or making you lose a uh, patient like your patience your temper well in our language, that's going to be Zerikarli or Tarchatadigyan. And uh, let's study these examples. Well, December has been a tiresome month with uh, hits and glints gather. Well, I would make a sentence like 2020 has been a tiresome year. Right, guys? Yeah, it's a tiresome year. So I find it very tiresome doing the same job day after day. Or he has the tiresome habit of finishing your sentence for you. Wow, that really that really makes you annoyed. Uh, that really irritates everybody, I guess, if there is a person who uh, finishes your sentence for you. That's really annoying. So uh, he has a tiresome habit. See, guys? So... And a tiresome, see guys, tiresomely, uh, re repetitive speech, or ty tiresomely long wait. Uh, we've got two examples for an adverb of the word tiresome. So I would advise guys to read some examples for its adverb, noun, or let's say uh, other, other word families. Okay, now let's continue. We've got we've got the next word. Uh, well, ah, we've got the next word right here. Well, um, I'm sure that most of my students uh, have heard me use this word time and time again because I love this word. And uh, but actually, we have to first pay attention to its pronunciation. Well, uh, it's not alert. It's not alert, it's alert, alert, alert. And its definition is right here given, and we can see that it means quiet to see, understand, and act in a particular situation. Which means in our language that's gonna be or that's gonna be like uh, in in the Russian language that's gonna be shustri. Uh, okay, and now let's study examples. I'm not feeling very alert today. Not enough sleep last night. Which means because of not enough sleep last night. Where a couple of alert readers wrote into the newspaper pointing out the mistake. And parents should be alert to sudden changes in children's behavior. Yeah. I guess these examples make it clear for you guys to understand about the word. So let's continue. The next word is disorganized. Disorganized, um, well, we, we can pronounce that word in the way of British people, and that's going to be a little bit different. Well, it's going to be disorganized. Uh, but if you want to sound like an American one, you have to pronounce the word like disorganized while stressing the word stressing the sound er disorganized and its definition is badly planned and without order see and tapsis odam yoki tadbar well now let's study the examples the whole conference was totally disorganized nobody knew what they were supposed to be doing where he's impossible to to work for he is so disorganized because he is so disorganized, that means. Okay, and the last sentence, uh, last example given to us to understand the word is, what if I think I'm efficient, but I'm seen as disorganized? Oh, well, a person uh, is complaining about that situation that, what if I think I'm efficient? Well, I, I myself think I'm efficient, but I'm seen, which means other people see me as disorganized so what if I do so 
what should I be doing now? Kind of person is asking you for some advice. Okay, now let's continue. The next word is dowdy. See, that word sounds lit, right? The sounds, that, that word sounds um, really good. So the word is dowdy. Dowdy. See, we have to stress the first letter, the first sound, dowdy. And dowdy means, well, especially off closes, where the person varying them. Well, not attractive or not fashionable. Well, this is ayol or this is kinyan. Baza da bus irke klergen spatan hamon ishantliyan ma koramus no asosa this is kinyan kinyan ayol hakada gap ketiyapta. Dowdy woman, dowdy. See guys, and we've got a, a number of examples given to us to understand um, to get the complete picture about the word. So the, right here, guys, see a dowdy skirt where she looked dowdy and plain. Where she looks rather dowdy, see, dowdy, dowdy, and if I'm not mistaken, I've heard this word in uh, one of one of the songs created by uh, Eminem, dowdy man, like dowdy man. This is king, yeah, man, also in the Okay, let's continue the next word, and the next word is uh, is also a very good and very very meaningful word. I really want you guys to understand, to learn this word by heart, and I really want you to use this word in your speech when when it's needed. So the word is glamours. Glamours. So we have to stress the first sound, g glamours. And its definition is attractive in an exciting and special way. See? Uh, in our in our language, that's gonna be Josebali. So and um, the examples can give us more, more idea about that. So, a glamorous woman or a glamorous outfit. See, that that collocation is what I like so much. A glamorous outfit. Glamorous outfit. Or a glamorous job. Or, let's say, she, she was looking very glam. Glam is a short version of glamorous, but that's informal, okay? If you want to sound formal, you have to use you have to pronounce the whole the whole word like glamorous, but if you are having some informal English conversation, then just go ahead, go ahead with this word like glam, okay? And I want you to see also glamorousness, glamorousness, glamorousness is an, it's uh, it's noun version, okay? Uh, again, uh, I have to repeat that, guys. If you want to sound more professional, if you want to sound uh, a person uh, who, who knows English or uh, a person who is able to point out exactly what he is talking about or touching the point that a person wants to, you have to learn different adjectives, different words to be uh, able to sound more lucid. Okay, now let's continue. The next word is well-educated. Well-educated. Well-educated means Having had a good education, see, having had, not having itself, but having had a good education, which means the the person's background can tell us that the person has had a good education, and its translation is right here given that yeah, malamotli or oli malamotli, and um, let's guys study the examples. Well educated or highly and highly motivated workers, where I want my children to be well educated, where she wished. She very well educated. See, uh, we ha we have got so great sentence and examples that uh, can help you understand the word itself uh, better. So, guys, uh, I would ad advise you to see also the word literate. Okay, literate, illiterate. Uh, it's close to the word uh, educated. Not well educated, but the word educated. Then you can understand. Okay, just. Go and uh, look it up. The next word is uh, also one of one of the advanced words. It's adroid. That's not adroid. That's not like adroid. That's adroid. And adroid means very skillful and quick in the way you think or move, which means adjil or chakon. And uh, these examples can make it clear for us. An adroid, let's say adroid. Uh, reaction, answer, movement of the hand, or let's say she became adroit at dealing with difficult questions, 
or uh, you sh sh you should learn to be more Android. See guys, Apple or Shakun Rock Bullish now. Hmm, Shustri Bullish now. The Yamano Yakun Rock. I believe I should read the Yamano Yakun Rock. Okay, let's continue. The next word is guys. Uh, I believe people who uh, who live in Pakistan or who live in the let's say Central Asia know this word in in the Russian language. Caprizni, Caprizni, but in the English language that's gonna be that's gonna be a little bit different in terms of pronunciation that that's gonna sound like uh, capricious, capricious, capricious means changing mood or behavior suddenly and unexpectedly. like that word like Caprizni. Okay, now let's read uh, the examples given for us. <clears throat> well, a capricious child. Or he was a cruel and capricious uh, tyrant, and this is not a capricious animal, so it can easily adapt to the climate here. See, even we can use this adjective uh, for animals, capricious animal. And guys, see also capriciousness, and that's the noun version of capricious. Capricious, okay? That that sounds so fast, capricious. They, you shouldn't sound, you shouldn't sound like capricious or capricious. Okay, capricious, capricious. Now let's continue the next word with the next word. The next word is oh come on ah the next word is right here. That's peace loving. That's peace loving. See guys, peace loving. And we know the word peace. We know the word love. And if we uh, if we join them together, uh, there will be different meaning. Like it's it's definition. Let's let's read its definition. Uh, liking peace and uh, trying to live and act in a way which will bring it. Uh, which means in our language that's gonna be like tinchlik sevar. And uh, our example can make it uh, clear for us. Understand it better. Well, the Uzbeks are a peace-loving nation, and people living here like those who are peace-living, peace-loving, and it's really safe to live in a peace-loving country. Yeah, that, that actually makes sense. Okay, guys, let's keep going on. The next word is dedicated. 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 Uh, the word is is uh, used very often. And that's why it's worth learning better. It's worth learning well. And now, guys, let's read. Well, uh, believing that something is very important and giving a lot of time and en energy to it, which means fudokar or sadokatli. Well, I would say fudokar. Um, I guess fudokar comes uh, to the meaning well. Well. A dedicated father or a dedicated teacher or she's completely dedicated to her work or the Green Party is dedicated to protect uh, to protecting the environment well and that's really worth seeing also the words of dedication and dedicate itself to understand uh, more about the words okay now guys let's continue with the word uh, precious Precious means, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, the word is creus. I mispronounced the word creus. Creus means um, interested in learning about people or things around you. Well, uh, that, that, that can be translated in our language in this way. And uh, let's read examples. I was uh, curious to know what would happen next where babies are curious about everything around them. Or why did you ask? And uh, let's say person B is answering, I was just curious, I was just curious, see? And uh, I want you guys to see also the word of uh, curi curiosity. Curiosity uh, means kuzukulchanlik, and we've got a saying, curiosity killed the cat, which means curiosity curiosity let's continue words with ah, dignified 
dignified means controlled and serious and calm and therefore deserving respect. Well, uh, that's gonna be uh, salobatli or uh, savlatli uh, or o'zini yaxshi boshqaradigan, jiddiy bos o'zini bosib olgan, shuning uchun ham hurmatga sazovor bor ma'nosini beruvchi so'zlar. And the example uh, uh, the examples given here can make make it clear for us guys. So a tall uh, dignified woman or he's maintained a dignified silence about the rumors or the defeated candidate gave a dignified speech in which he congratulated his rival. And yeah, it's better to to see also the word dignify. It's the verb uh, version of that word. Okay, guys, let's continue. We've got the next word, sober. Sober means serious and calm. Serious and calm. See, uh, that means tinge and baman. In fact, the whole wedding was a sober affair. No dancing, uh, just people standing around in groups chatting politely. Or Anthony was uh, in a very sober mood. I scarcely heard him uh, laugh all night. And I want you guys to see also the word placid. Uh, that's really close to the word sober. Okay, let's continue guys. We've got another word right here. Well, it's extraordinary. Extraordinary means See, we've got the word extra and we've got the word ordinary and uh, we're joining them together then the word comes here with the definition of very very unusual special and unexpected or strange and uh, the translation is telling us that no that the hard doyum ham uchramaydigan okay so the examples are right here uh, we witnessed the extraordinary side of an old lady climbing a tree to rescue her cat. Or the rainforest is, is home to many extraordinary ordinary creatures. Or she has an extraordinary memory, memory and can remember details and names that I've long forgotten. So uh, you can understand about the word by reading examples. Okay guys, let's continue. Okay, guys, and now let's move on to the next word. Well, we've got right here the words uh, that's uh, used not that, uh, let's say, that, that's not a common word that's used uh, less commonly. But anyway, we we should know that word. <clears throat> well, uh, the word is prudent, prudent, and it means avoiding risks and uncertainty like uncertainties and uh, careful so uh, okay guys so uh, we we can translate that word in our language like ehtiyot or risk va nonaqlikdan ehtiyot bo'ladigan ya'ni qochadigan ma'nolari beradi prudent that's actually a very good word to learn by heart okay now let's uh, read its examples well, it's always prudent to read a contract properly before signing it. Or the firm was commanded for its financial prudence. See, I'm using the word prudence like, like a noun. I mean, it's a noun version right here given. So the firm was commanded for its financial prudence. Finance taraflama firmana See, the word is... I guess uh, everybody can accept the word excellent or very like highly useful. Okay, let's guys continue. Let's let's uh, keep modest, modest like. Okay, guys, uh, we've got the word dutiful. Du dutiful. Dutiful means um, doing everything that you should do. Doing everything that you should do, which means uzburchina bajaradiyan. And uh, he's a dutiful son, or since I know him very well, I'm sure he's not and will never try to be uh, a dutiful husband. See? Yani uzburchini bajaradiyan ugal or uzburchini bajaradiyan er. So I want you guys to also see the words duty 
and on duty and off duty okay that's gonna that's gonna help you so much now let's move on the next word and that word is also very good one uh, I guess that's gonna help you to crank up your electrical resource and sound more professional if you learn that but so uh, the word is painstaking painstaking means extremely careful and correct and using a lot of effort means it uh, he was described by his colleagues as a painstaking journalist where it took months of painstaking research to write the book see guys it took months of painstaking research to write the book so guys i want you to learn these words too let's continue the next word is uh, earnest, earnest, earnest means serious and determined, and especially too serious and unable to find your own actions funny, uh, which means GD. Any hazel shakaratlarna, uzana hazel hazel tomus, any humor you know, just to tell you, larna, ja chunevera digan odam emas. Yani GD kabul kada hamanar sana. The Hamanas animas, no Kaplarna, Kalaklarna, Gidi Hamul Kladian in Tonar Bolad, Ushalarian Spatan, Shatalian, so the sec. Make you learning Sharakatan as well as Shatalian, so the sec to work in earnest. Okay, uh, let's read examples. He was a very earnest young man, Julian Gidi, a uh, young man. Um, these fanatics are in deadly earnest. Uh, when they say they want to destroy all forms of government in deadly earnest, who share Yanada Anagro, Yanid D. Rock, a candidate in a course at Uche, with the collocation Berlian in deadly earnest. And I thought he was joking, but I did not realize he was in earnest. See, he was in earnest. Ma, uh, who has a lashy after the boy left man, as the dead, Chumap Mikey, which did to Yaneke, Yanid Kaplaram, which did have a play of Yaneke. So guys, just check the words being in earnest and in deadly earnest, okay? Now let's move on the next word. Hmm. We don't have the next word, guys, actually. We have finished. We have finished and, guys, I have been telling you uh, as many as 50 great words for you to improve your English, to improve what you have been learning. Uh, so guys, I really want you to learn these all words um, by heart and I would challenge you uh, to to count how many words you had learned before you watched my video or before you watched my presentation and uh, write the comment below and just let me know how many words you have learned so far, okay, before watching my video. Okay, guys, wish you good luck. Wish you improve your English all the time. Okay, stay in English, improve your English, and achieve your goals. See you in the next time.